Hello everybody, it's Mel. Thank you so much for joining me today for my July reading wrap up. In the month of July, myself along with Steph from Novelty Corner, Meredith from Bin Chicken Books and Ren from The Reading Ren hosted the Australian Readathon. The idea behind the readathon was very basically to get us to read books by Australian authors. We did have a bingo board that you could choose to use in order to help you pick books. Um, you could do just a bingo, you could do the whole board as a blackout, however you wanted to do it, or you could just read one book written by an Australian author and you will have participated in the readathon. I will pop up the bingo board just here. I did complete the bingo board, just, and I'm really only able to say that because one it's not technically a DNF, I haven't decided I won't ever finish it, but I was about halfway through when the month ended and I was enjoying it, but I kind of wanted to pick up other things. Um, I will probably go back to it, but in this month in August, it is the Pickpong a thon readathon hosted by Crystal at Bond Book Reviews. It's a competitive based readathon, unlike the Australian readathon, and I really want to help my team get some points. So I've put that one on hold for now. But anyway, so the bingo board is up here. I've also got it in my journal, so I will be looking at that. But starting on the far left hand side, we had Animal on the cover. For this book, I read, for this prompt even, I read The Bookbinder of Jericho because there are little butterflies on the cover. I mean, technically they are paper butterflies, but I'm still counting it. And then next one along was LGBTQIA plus rep. For this one, I read The Invocations. And then the next one along is your favorite genre. Now, I did double up quite a bit in order to complete this, this bingo board, which you were allowed to do. So for that one, I also included The Invocations for your favorite genre. I don't know, it's urban fantasy, witchy kind of book. So I'm counting it as my favorite genre. I'm not sure how really fantasy it is, but I really enjoyed it, so. <laughs> then we have the next one along, well, the next one down along, First Nations author. And for this one, I read After Story by Larissa Barrent. Then in the middle, free space. And I just decided to go with Do Something Australian. So I ate Vegemite on toast, a very Australian thing that I actually do quite often, so it wasn't particularly amazing, but anyway. Next one along, we had a coastal setting. And for this one, I read The Deep by Carl Perry. Um, number seven, read on the cover, and for this one I counted After Story, again by Larissa Brent. Number eight, it says set in Australia, and again, the deep for set in Australia. And then the final prompt was host favourite, and this is the one that I didn't finish, but I got 50% in, so I'm counting it, and that was Anything But Fine by Tobias Madden. And this is one of the ones that Ren nominated as one of their favourite books for the readathon, so we had a little graphic with books that we've nominated as some of our favourite Australian books or books by Australian authors. So that's briefly the information about the readathon that I did last month. I'm only doing one readathon at the moment, like at a month per month at a time at the moment. And of course it had to be my own. <laughs> so we had the Australian readathon. I just went for a walk and got myself a smoothie from Boost Juice. Um, so, excuse me. Moving on now to stats for the month of July. In July, I read, I've written here that I read five books. I don't actually know if that's true. <laughs> Let me just double check. Oh yeah, no, five books, well, five and a half books. I have only counted the books that I finished in my page count. I probably should have counted the other, but I was listening to an audiobook and I find the trans translating from audiobook hours to finished to, to pages kind of a bit tricky. So anyway, I read 1,808 pages. Again, teaching books, none this month. I read three books that had LGBTQIA plus rep. I read two books that were written by BIPOC authors. I read four Australian books, four books by Australian authors, one book by an Australian Indigenous author. None of the books were translated from another language into English, and none of the books were not inspired by European culture, theories, ideas, etc. In terms of the format of the books, I read all of them physically, so I didn't read any ebook or audiobooks this month. Um, one of them was a YA book, none of them were middle grade, and four were adult. I didn't read any comics, graphic novels, or manga. I did read two books from my own TBR. One was a reread, 
All right, in terms of genres, I had one fantasy, I had no historical fantasy, I had two historical fiction, I had no sci-fi dys slash dystopian, I had no paranormal slash fabulism, one contemporary slash literary, no romance, no dark academia mm -hmm. horror, mm -hmm. horror or gothic. I had one thriller mystery, didn't read any non-fiction, didn't read any classics. I didn't DNF anything, which was very nice. I didn't have any two stars. I had one three star, three four stars, and one five star. In terms of my ratings, for star ratings, I had 4.3 as my average, and for core pile, I had eight as my average, which is pretty amazing, I have to say. I think I'm doing really well this year with ratings of picking books that I'm enjoying. Okay, so what I always do when I am going through and telling you about the books that I read, I, sorry, that's just me mixing up my smoothie. I start with the books that I finished first and continue that way. So they're not in any order of like star rating or anything like that. So the first book that I read in the month, or that I finished in the month of July, was After Story by Larissa Brent. Now I have talked about this a bit recently. I recently put up a reading vlog which is the third in a theme of reading vlogs that I've been doing this year where I choose one booktuber and choose a few books that they have inspired me in some form or another to read. So I wasn't reading After Story for the vlog but I did talk about it in the vlog because it did actually feel like there was some similarities between After Story and another book that I read for the vlog. So the vlog that I'm talking about is Willow Made Me Do It, so Willow Talks Books. I will link that down in the description below. Anyone that I talk about in this video will be linked in the description below. So please go and check them out, subscribe, do all those things if you haven't already. Um, but yes, so I will link my vlog if you want to go and look at that. But I do talk about After Story a little bit in that. And then I also recommended After Story off of the back of that experience in the vlog to Willow Talks Books in one of my recommending books to other booktubers videos, which again, I will link in the description below. So I have talked a little bit about After Story recently, so I will try not to be too... I would try not to talk too much. I'll try not to carry on too much. We all know it's a little bit difficult. I do tend to ramble, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> After Story is obviously a book by an Australian author, and it is a contemporary story about two Indigenous women. Sorry if the angle has changed a little bit. Um, I had to change the battery. So, as I was saying, Larissa Brent is an Indigenous Australian woman, and After Story is a book about two Indigenous Australian women. They are mother and daughter, so we follow both of them. We have dual perspectives, and the premise is that the daughter, Jasmine, wants to go to England and do a literary tour of England because she studied English Lit at university in her undergrad degree, um, and she wants to go and check out where all of her literary icons lived and worked etc. And her and her mother are, I wouldn't say they're estranged, but they don't really get along very well. There's a lot of things that have happened in their past, um, in their shared history that is quite traumatic um, and so that's had a quite a detrimental effect on their relationship. Yeah, so they, they aren't, like I said, I wouldn't say they're estranged necessarily, but they don't really communicate very well. They don't really get along very well. Jasmine really wants to change this, so she decides to invite her mum along on this tour. Her mum is not as educated as Jasmine. She left, un left high school quite young when she was pregnant, and she has never left her hometown where she grew up and then where her children grew up. Their experiences are very, very different in a lot of ways, but because they have this shared trauma and because they are Indigenous Australians, they have a lot of shared experiences at the same time. The mother, Della, is very excited by the invitation and she decides to go with Jasmine. So it's about the two of them doing this tour of the UK, traveling around, um, looking at these different places. They go on a tour like I keep saying, but it, it's one of these ones where there's multiple people. So they meet lots of different people and yeah, it's about them reconnecting, it's about them reflecting on their lives and reflecting on their past trauma. It's about them kind of trying to come to terms with that and forge a new relationship. I really, really enjoyed this book. On Core Pile, I gave this one a 9.14, which is five stars. This was a reread for me and I loved it just as much 
this time around as I did the second time around. I think Larissa Brent is an absolutely phenomenal author. She is able to really get into the crux of a character, what they are, what they are, basically. <laughs> She's really able to give you this real depth of character, this depth of who a person is, how they think, what they're like, why their experiences have shaped the way that they are, and like in this instance, how they might be trying to change, why that might be difficult, and so on. So it's an amazing character study and I just thought it was done incredibly well. Like I said, I love Larissa Brent's writing style. I think she's very able to really get into people. She really understands people and is able to express their experiences and their personalities really, really well. So if that's the kind of book that you enjoy, I would highly recommend this one. Yeah, I just thought it was absolutely fantastic and I'm really, really happy to have reread it uh, and read it for the Australian Readathon. The next book that I'm going to talk to you about today, let me just have another bit of smoothie. The next book that I'm going to talk to you about today is The Bookbinder of Jericho by Pip Williams. If you know me and my channel, you would know that the Dictionary of Lost Words was one of my favourite books of, I think, not last year, but the year before. And so off the strength of that, I picked up The Bookbinder of Jericho, and I really, really enjoyed this one as well. It didn't blow me away quite as much as the Dictionary of Lost Words, but I still really enjoyed it. I thought it was incredibly well written. I really, really like Pip Williams' writing style. And yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this one also. On Corpile, I gave this one an 8.43, which is four and a half stars. So this book is written in the same time frame and same area of the world as the, the Dictionary of Lost Words. So it is based in Oxford in the time of the First World War. Yeah, early 20th century. We follow mostly Peggy, um, but we also pick up on, there's lots of different characters and we pick up on lots of different stories around Peggy. Peggy is a young woman who lives with her sister. Her parents are gone. Her sister has a mental disability. Uh, it's never explained what that is, but she she has some difficulty with learning um, and communication. And so Peggy feels like she has to look after her sister. Her sister's name is Maud. When they were 12 years old, they left school. Well, I think Peggy was 12 and Maud was 10 or something like that. They left school and they started working with their mother in the book bindery, which is part of the um, Oxford University Press. But Peggy has always wanted to go and actually attend Oxford University and get a degree, but she's never felt like she was able to do that because she needed to be there for Maud, especially when their mother died. Although Maud works with her, Peggy feels that and has always acted as though Maud needs her and is is not really capable of looking after herself. Throughout the book you discover that actually Maud might be more capable than anyone thinks, particularly Peggy. But like I said, we follow a bunch of different characters. So like it's from Maud's perspective, but we follow a bunch of different characters. So we follow, oh, sorry, it's from Peggy's perspective. We find out more about Maud. Um, they stay in Oxford while the war is on. A bunch of different um, people from Europe who were, the allies who from Europe who were who were injured in the war are sent over to Oxford and are uh, in order to recover. So there's uh, quite an influx of injured people um, and different parts of Oxford are turned into like hospitals or hospices and things like that. Peggy decides to volunteer for like the Red Cross and yeah it's it's basically about Peggy's life during that time but it's also about how the war changed a lot of the cultural landscape of England. Women were st starting to pick up roles that were traditionally male roles because there were so many men sent off to war. And yeah, it was really, really, like I said, really well written. I love, again, P Pitt Williams' way of getting into those characters' heads um, and really expressing incredibly interesting characters and the experiences that they go through and how the different experiences of different people in the same situation, how different people respond. And I just thought it was really, really interesting. I thought it was really well written and I thoroughly enjoyed falling into this world. Next up, I'm going to talk to you about The Deep by Kyle Perry. So this one is a mystery thriller. This one is 
very twisty and very turny. It actually takes place in Tasmania where I'm from which is the, if you don't know, <laughs> the uh, smallish island off the very bottom of Australia and we follow a range of different characters who are all part of this family who run a drug ring um, at, oh, out of Hobart. Yeah there's a lot going on in this book. I don't really know how to kind of tell you the synopsis without spoiling anything but many years ago before the book starts one of the, the the wife of one of the sons of this drug family, her and their child go missing and no one knows what happened. Their bodies were never found. A lot of people suspect that the husband got rid of them somehow, but he's disappeared as well. And we opened the book with the son suddenly appearing. And this opens up a whole bunch of new questions. And from there, we start to follow the various different members of the family. Uh, who are involved or were involved in the drug business. When this happens, um, when this boy turns up, he's not really a boy anymore. I think he's like 18 or something or maybe even 20 or so. One of the other brothers, the one of the brothers of the his father goes um, missing as well. And so there's big mystery going on and no one really knows what's happening. And so we're starting to ex explore this family and what their various relationships are like who might have done what, what happened in the past, what's currently going on, all of that sort of thing. This was very twisty. There were a lot of things that you thought would ha would ha was happening or you, you were led down one path of thinking that that was the answer to this question and then you'd find out that actually it wasn't. Yeah, I quite enjoyed it. I gave it an eight, a 6.86 .6 on Core Pile, which is a three and a half stars. So I did really enjoy it, but it wasn't like, an amazing book. It didn't blow me away or anything like that, but I did enjoy it. I had a good time with it. I read it while I was um, on a little reading weekend away with my friend Michelle and that was really really fun and she had already read it so I borrowed it off her and it was really fun because every now and then I'd be like oh my god this just happened or I think it's gonna be this and yeah. Um, I had quite a few guesses, some of which I did get correct and some of which I was totally off, but I was pretty proud of myself with a couple that I did get correct because of the way the twists were written. It was very much one of those sorts of like you think you know what's going on and then suddenly it's not quite what you think at all or very misleading. I don't think I will say any more than that but I do think that if you enjoy thrillers um, I think it's worth a read. I think that you would find it really interesting. Lots of twists and turns but very well written twists and turns. Definitely worth a read if that's the kind of thing that you enjoy. Then we have the only book that I read that wasn't by an Australian author and that is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. This one was one of the books that I read for that blog I mentioned earlier, Willow Made Me Do It. So if you want my full kind of thoughts as I'm reading the book, I highly recommend that you go and check that blog out. This book is the one that I compared to After Story by Larissa Brent. The reason for that is because it is following someone who is going on a tour around areas of the UK and reflecting on their lives. In this instance we are in the 1950s I believe <laughs> from memory and we are following, I can't remember the his name, um, we're following a man who is a butler and he has worked at this one house for most of his career. His new employer, the house was sold um, to an American and his new employer offers him the opportunity to go on a tour, driving tour, using his car around the south, south of England. After a little bit of thought, the butler decides to go ahead and do that. The owner of the house will be away for a while and so he has an opportunity to leave the, the, he, leave the house and go and, and do this driving tour. And while he's doing the driving tour, he's reflecting on not only his life, uh, but he's reflecting on political machinations that have happened throughout the years while he was employed. Um, so the house used to belong to a lord um, and he, I can't remember the lord's name either, and he was privy, because he's the butler, he was privy to a lot of kind of secret things that were going on during the lead up to the First World, First World? No, Second World War. The lord was very invested in politics and was trying to steer the war and particularly the aftermath of the war, the Second World War, um, trying to steer England in certain areas but also parts of different parts of 
Europe as well, different powers in Europe. So the butler's reflecting on those things that he was privy to, as well as his own experiences as a butler. He's reflecting on the role of a butler. He's reflecting on the English concept of class, the English concept of honour, the English concept of like the the lords, lordships and, and what makes a good man, what makes a good butler, but also what makes a good man, what makes a good person, whether or not someone who is given, like, born into this role of lordship, whether you can assign any amount of um, moral goodness to that title and whether their people live up to it. There's also a little bit of a kind of a hint of a potential relationship, potential um, romantic relationship for the butler in there as well, and he reflects a little bit on that and his relationship with the previous employee of the house. And yeah, it's a lot of that sort of thing happening in the book. Initially, I found it really difficult to get into. It felt like there were a lot of really long tangents where the butler would be talking about whether he was going to go on this tour and he'd be trying to decide whether or not to say yes. Then he would go down this tangent about when this other butler came to the house with this lord and how he was this great butler and these conversations that they had and then he'd reflect on something that happened with his father and it felt like it was just kind of like why are we going on all these tangents what when is something going to start happening but then after a while I started to realize that that was the point of the story and kind of really get in interested in what he was reflecting on and what he was philosophizing about um, and I ended up really really enjoying it I gave it a 7.71 in core pile which is four stars so I think the writing was beautiful I really do think that Kazuo Ushiguro is an amazing author. The way that he was able to write these reflections and this butler reflecting on all of these different concepts, these different philosophical concepts, these political concepts, as well as his own experiences and, and thoughts and feelings was really, really well done. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was a really nice, quiet, contemplative kind of book. I would say it was definitely literary fiction. And then the final book that I finished in the month of July, I actually finished on the 1st of August, but I was two thirds of the way through and I just really wanted to finish it. Um, I give it an eight in Corpa, which is four stars. So I obviously really, really enjoyed it. This book is a kind of gothic witchy book. We follow three main female characters. We follow Jude and Jude is the daughter of a very rich man and at some point in her teenage years she decides she wants an invocation and an invocation in this world is um, a spell and so she has these demons that don't, that are sh kind of shackled to her and she has like her soul is dying, um, her leg has this horrible injury, she like every morning she wakes up she's sick, she's just in a really bad place. She's been ostracized by her family and so she's on the hunt for a witch to try and help her to get out of this situation. We also follow Zara and Zara is on the hunt for a witch and then we follow Ema and Ema is a witch so she writes invocations. She's very good at it, she's a very very good witch, very good at writing invocations. Not Ema but the other two are in contact with this police officer and they have been going to crime scenes because women have been being killed. They realise that these women are being killed and that invocations are being cut out of their skin. And they end up meeting up, Zara and Jude end up meeting at a crime scene. They hadn't met before and they met up at this crime scene, get introduced to each other, make this realisation and then realise it's the same person that's been writing the invocations. They track them down and that person is Ema. Um, and the three girls team up to try and solve the mystery of who's killing these women. That's all I'm going to say. A lot happens in this book. There are some quite interesting reveals at the end, some things I definitely didn't see coming. But yeah, I thought it was really well written. I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the characters. I thought they were really well written. I thought it was great pacing. I loved the suspense. There's a little bit of a romantic relationship going on in the story, which was I thought was quite well done. I wouldn't say it was my favourite thing, but it was definitely... Like, it, it didn't take anything away from the story. I don't personally think it added that much to the story, but it was still, like, it was it was okay. It was 
well done enough. But yeah, overall, I really, really enjoyed the book. Like I said, I gave it an 18 cold pile, which is four stars. Once again, I think I had a really great reading month, despite my little bit of um, reading slumpiness, which wasn't at all down to any of the books. It was just down to, I don't know, <laughs> uh, head, brain. Yeah. But anyway, um, those are all the books that I read in the month of July. Like I mentioned before, I did have another book that I'm halfway through, but I will talk about that when I get around to finishing that book. So at some point that will appear <laughs> in a wrap up. But anyway, that's everything I want to talk to you about today. Let me know in the comments below, have you read any of these books? What did you think of them? How did you go in July? If you'd like to leave me a comment but you don't know what, then leave me a little butterfly emoji because of the little butterflies on both After Story and the book binder of Jericho. All of my social media details are listed in the description below, so if you'd like to go and follow me on any of those other platforms, please feel free to do so. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, like I said, thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.